Right now, an Orange County woman is locked up, accused in a strange murder. Deputies say she zipped her boyfriend in a suitcase and then left him to die. Um, decided to play we're just stupid like that. Like, sure. We were putting puzzles together, and we were doing artwork. You can see the puzzle that we finished in there, and then the artwork, and then decided to play hide and seek, just being stupid. Okay. So he decided to get in the suitcase. So I thought it would be funny to, and he was laughing about it too, mm -hmm. to dip him up in there. Mm -hmm. I go upstairs and fell asleep. Deputies say Jorge Torres Jr. suffocated after being zipped in a suitcase and left for several hours. I'm like really scared. I want you guys to know that. And then, but um, like, I don't, like, this was totally like not intentional. Like, that's what I'm scared about too. Like, According to an arrest affidavit, Boone called 911, saying the two were drinking and playing a game of hide and seek Sunday night. That's when she said they both thought it would be funny if Torres got into a suitcase. Boone told investigators she passed out in her bed, forgetting about her boyfriend until the next morning. I just don't know what his, I don't know what it is. Exactly. But detectives say they found videos on her cell phone that tell a much different story. They say in the clips, Jorge repeatedly kept calling out Sarah's name, screaming for help and saying he can't breathe. According to the report, Boone replied saying, that's what you do when you choke me. Investigators say she is also heard saying, that's on you. That's what I feel like when you cheat on me. So, but do you guys tell his family like today or after yes, tomorrow? We, will. we have to. It's so long. Well, we have to go and make contact with you. We're still, we they're going to think they killed him. They always have said that. They've always, always, always have said that. I told you it's because I'm the blue-eyed white dragon. That's what they call me. Buckle your damn sofa seatbelt up today, y'all, because you're going to need it because this video is going to knock you off the damn sofa. Oh, and speaking of the damn sofa, everybody, welcome back to the damn sofa. Y'all, that is the damn sofa, and that's my damn sassy sidekick, Mr. Roscoe P. Coltrane, holding it down back there, and my damn name is Paul. Y'all, today we're going to be talking about the suitcase murder lady, a.k.a. Sarah Boone. Okay, very quickly, this is the case that literally had my head spinning, still does. This ain't going to help this video breaking down the interrogation. Your head will be spinning even more, but we might get some good chuckles out of it along the way, okay? This is the woman that claimed that her and her boyfriend were playing hide and seek. She and him decided it would be a good idea for him to get in the suitcase. She went upstairs and fell asleep, and the next morning she found him deceased. And it was whoosh, unintentional. I would say we're going to play a drinking game with the word unintentional, but y'all, I would have so many lawsuits and charges against me for like whatever kind of homicide charge there is because nobody could handle taking a shot every time she says unintentional. That is half the reason why we've gathered around the damn sofa to talk about the word unintentional. So the way this video is going to work is what we're going to do is I have my little computer here. I'm going to play some clips. You will see them on the big screen and then we'll come back to me. I'll give my commentary on it, some thoughts on it, things of that nature, you know, thoughts and prayers about it. Now, as always, I want to thank everybody who makes the Sofa Squad possible. Y'all would not be here without you. I couldn't make the amount of content that I do, and we couldn't gather around the damn sofa and dish on these things. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of Roscoe's heart, and from beneath the damn sofa cushions. Now, side note, Sofa Sidebar, this might be a multiple part one because I'm looking at how much footage I have. I have like an hour's worth of footage that I cut down from it and probably the way it's edited or whatever right now. Long story short, it's a lot, okay? So what I might end up doing is breaking it down because I don't know how long this will go. And if y'all are like vibing doing this particular case, just drop in the comments, let me know like, yep, I'll do another one of this. Or if you're like, no, that's okay, you know what? We don't wanna hang out with Sarah or Paul anymore for this one, thank you. I totally get it and that is fine. Very quickly, bullet points to get everybody on the same page who's not familiar with this case. So Sarah Boone and Jorge Torres began dating around 2017. They moved in together after a few months. Sarah Boone calls 911 around 1 p.m. February 24th, 2020 after finding her boyfriend Jorge dead in a suitcase. 
Sarah claims that she fell asleep while they were playing hide and seek. She didn't realize he was still in the suitcase when she woke up hours later. Now, two videos would be found on her phone of him yelling and begging to be allowed in the suitcase while she basically berated and mocked him. Now, court records have revealed that they were both charged with battery in July 2018 after an argument escalated into like a violent event. Uh, and also, the police were called to Sarah Boone and Jorge's home in June two, hold on June 15th, 2019. Uh, Boone claimed Torres had been angry at her for talking to another man. Okay, so I just wanted everyone to have like some very just preliminary backstory about who we're dealing with, what's going on, that kind of thing. So now that we're all on the same kind of a page or whatever, you know, without further ado, let's review. So this morning we went to his autopsy um, and we were informed of some injuries that he has uh, by the doctor. So I want, um, so he's got <coughs> Scratch marks to his back. I know what that's from. Okay. And um, it's called a contusion. Do you know what a contusion is? So, like, basically you're getting hit, and then, you know, you you, you get a mark from it. You'll get bruising. Like, some, okay. someone hit you or something like mm -hmm. that. It's called a, a contusion. So, he had some injuries to his left shoulder. Um, he had um, he had a cut near his, like, lip. We could see, we could see his... Um, his mouth was a little. Uh, I haven't laid a hand on him. Okay. I <coughs> also too. I he fell off my son's bike. Okay. So I don't know. And he's notorious for running into the wall okay. or the hall tree. Okay. So I. Okay. I what, don't, a, what about the scratches? <sighs> okay, we're off to a real rocky start, folks. It's not a good sign, okay, if you, especially if you've watched true crime, you're into it, all this kind of stuff. When the person of interest, let's say, or closest of kin, at this point she's not really even, I mean, they're bringing her in to question her. They already kind of have enough evidence or whatever, but they wanted to see what she has to say. Right off the rip, I didn't touch him. Right then and there, I was like, case closed, okay? Like, see if you can get her to talk, but I mean, Come on. And then she follows it up. The cliches are just astounding. Okay, well, he fell off my friend's bike. He's notorious for running into the walls. And I'm just like, oh, my God, this this is not good. This is not good at all. And what I think is, I guess I could say, amusing about Sarah is that she thinks that she is, like, you know, number one, entitled to get away with this, and we'll see this more as it goes on. But also, the, they're going to believe her, right? I'm just like, do you not watch any kind of TV? Like, these are the most just mundane, dime a dozen answers. They've heard these all before. On top of the palette for the entire interview is the second they start talking about any kind of injuries. I didn't do it! In all honesty, all honesty, we have not gotten into it. Okay. That's why, like, the only thing I thought you guys were going to ask me about, which I was going to be honest with you anyway, are the scratch marks on his back. Mm -hmm. Everything else, I have no idea what it is. No okay. idea what it is. Nonetheless, I've had my son over the house, too, so... I... Well, your son was there when? When was he last there? Oh, gosh. Last my week? understanding, he was there, like, last Tuesday? Last... I don't know if it was Tuesday. But, yes, he was there last week, so... Well, we're talking about Sunday. Yeah. We're make, we're just talking about what occurred Sunday. Because, like I said, the injuries are, they occurred within that time period. So you're talking about day before yesterday. Sunday leading into Monday. I mean, so again, right off the bat, she goes into it. I'm just going to be honest with you. Okay, and I was going to say this before, but, and I was going to be honest with you. You already know she's lying. You already know she's lying, right? Now, okay, to be perfectly honest, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. It, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, girl. Now, also, what is going to take place is this. There's these little nuances that go. So, first of all, there's a lot of lying that takes place. And I, I forgot to say this at the damn beginning, but please forgive me. Y'all, this is all allegedly. These are just my damn sofa opinions. I am not a professional. I have no authority to sit here and say if this person is guilty or not. So, these are my opinions, and this is for entertainment purposes only, okay? Now that we have said that. The fact that she's sitting there and she's like, you know, going into this whole thing of the, you know, oh, to be honest and all this and that, on top of, in this little segment, what you will see throughout this, and especially if you follow this and you know, 
the first of all the little lie she gets caught in so she's saying well my son was there now what she doesn't know at this point is that and she's very quickly finding out is that the detectives are going to say look we're talking about like recent like sunday like boom like yesterday like whatever one common thread that you'll see through this interrogation is sarah trying to play off at times when it suits her her level of drinking and alcoholism but it becomes very evident by the end of it that it's like she probably goes into blackout states and loses time and sense of days and all that kind of stuff because you're just like i mean she can't keep up with anything and it begins becomes evident so just keep that in mind the first being talking about her son trying to play it off like well i you know he was there last week besides he was there like we wouldn't have gotten into it and did it out well the cops are basically trying to say oh girl these injuries are like fresh okay like fresh Fresh, like the day that he died or the day before kind of a thing so she's gonna try and even play that off let's watch um like his head and his skull i have no idea as if something hit him i consider I not for touched him trauma. i have not touched <clears throat> him i have not touched him then how would he get those injuries tell me and we'll both know i have not touched him can you imagine getting in a basic argument at the house with her over something completely mundane who put the toilet paper on the roll wrong you know what i'm saying on the little spinny thing who left the milk out you know her immediate response tell me and we'll both know she uses that hundreds of times a day like when she spit that out so quickly i was like that is a go-to phrase for her she's done she's going to jail <laughs> so let's keep watching i have no idea we had a good day Mm -hmm. It was a good day. We've had good days lately. Mm -hmm. Even considering everything that's going on with our jobs and life in general and ex-wives and everything. It's been good. Like, I don't even know where this is coming from. <laughs> we had a good day. We had a good day. I get a very fake vibe off of her and as we'll see as things go on it really wasn't that good of a day now also her acting like if you notice in the clip before where she scoots back and she's like what is this what is this i haven't touched him notice that the cops have not accused her of anything yet there's just asking her questions right and this is where a not guilty person would probably be more like god i don't know like let me think, did he fall? But her immediate response is, I didn't do it, and to back away from them, right? Like, I mean, so guilty acting. But the cops, and of course, she wouldn't realize this. It's like, but I'm sure they realize this, where it's like, honey, we haven't said that you've done this. You're the only one insinuating that you haven't done it by thinking that we're saying you've done it. You know what I mean? Confusing, I know, let's keep going. Like, we've been good. I don't know if, like, it's since the last time he got out of jail. Like, we've been good, and he's been having his classes mm -hmm. and his, seeing his probation officer, who's amazing. So... What do you mean by good? What's your definition of good? I mean, aim damn man. Now, one thing that is funny with the cops is as this goes on, they're very... Psh throughout this interview but they will interject just some common sense stuff that you're all thinking like that like what is your definition of god right because as you're listening to this you're starting to get a picture of well, the last time you got out of jail and it's like okay so what's well, like let's keep going with this like why was he in there what was going on i mean we know in hindsight right all the stuff behind it that went on at this point but listening to her she's describing how wonderful and lovely everything is well when they dropped the bombshell evidence it's just like oh my god things were completely not good i don't think you all understand he comes at me all the time he comes at me so it's either i flee or try to go upstairs and go to sleep that's usually what it is and i don't know if you talk to brian about any of that but most of the time when i flee i go over there so okay so more of the truth is coming out now again right off the bat you know she's he comes after me he comes after me you know if i want to do this i have to go upstairs and go to sleep and, da, 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 da. and from what i can gather what it sounds like to me is again when you see these toxic situations and whatnot you know it, it takes two to tango oftentimes right and so what i've kind of looked into it is I mean, I'm not trying to sit here and say, it sounds like they just didn't need to be together. Point blank, damn period. Uh, but it sounds like there was a lot going on and she's really trying to paint this picture in this interview. Like rosy little details and oh, things are so much better and oh, we really don't drink that much and oh, da 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 da. But time and time again that we see in these cases, the evidence will say otherwise. 
Right, but you're saying that you guys have been good, and when I asked you yesterday, there has the last incident that you could remember was the curtain rod incident, which you said was a month ago. So give or take. Right. So what do you mean by he comes after you? Like he gets belligerently drunk. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if y'all have looked through my phone yet and seen any of the pictures and the videos that I have taken. Mm -hmm. And the at one point I started documenting everything. Okay. So you all will see in my pictures, bloody fingers, split foreheads, he split my nose. I've got this. Right. I don't know if Brian told you about it, where I had to have almost what? I had one really bad surgery, but then it got really, 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 really bad, where I had to go like four or five more times afterwards for them to tend to it, mm -hmm. from him poking me in the back of the leg. Right. So it's... Then why are you still with him? Everybody asks me that. When I tell you guys this... I mean, I just can't roll my eyes hard enough at these people like her. First of all, is anybody getting Amber Heard vibes off of this? Notice that it, this is what's going to bury her, though. When she was like, when you start going through my phone, remember that comment. Because when that bites her in the ass here, probably in about, well, I don't know if it'll be in this video or whatever, but it's going to be a hot minute before we get to it. That's going to bite her in the ass because she's laying it out there. Like, oh, all this evidence. She has no idea what's on that damn phone. Y'all, she has no idea. It's like damn hidden camera up in here for her. Okay? It's like damn hidden camera up in here for her. But then also notice how at the very end where she starts the, can I tell you guys this? The fake crying, the this and that. She is spinning a tail as hard as she can about this dude. You know what I'm saying? Just going on and on about it. Just geared up. And, and the cop, again with his interjection, why are y'all together? You know what I'm saying? Like it's one of these things because as you start also piecing the puzzle together, I personally think she's one of these kind of abusers that is projects their own abuse onto somebody else. So if she's sitting here saying that he did all this to her, I have a feeling she was doing just as much, if not more, to him. I really love him. Like, I do. And I feel like I can help him. Like, I feel like I could help him, which I did, because he's come a really, he came a really long way from where he was in Philadelphia to moving back to here and to dealing with everything else that he's been dealing with. Mm -hmm. I've really helped him. I bailed him out of jail, what, three times. I've gone to every single hearing and every single arraignment, everything that I did for him. Gone to see all his public defenders, go to the state, I've gone to the state. I, I did everything for him because I'm trying to help him because I had, I had hope in him. And he was trying. He was really trying. Mm-hmm. Now, let's point out this real quick. Notice how we're not that deep into the interview, and it's all turned back around to I, 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 I. She is showing us signs of why she snapped and did what she did to him, right? That she has just told us without telling us in this little clip. I've done this for him. I've done that for him. I helped him so much. And she probably feels like maybe he cheated on her. Maybe he did this. I mean, we don't, you know, 100% know all the little details. We'll soon know. Yeah, but I mean, there's definitely stuff going on, right? And so she's feeling like, I did all this for him. And yet he still went out and did blank. You know, he still did this to me that kind of a situation. And that's what pushed her over the edge. Um, in addition to, notice how much she's talking about how drunk he gets. Oh, he gets belligerently drunk. Oh, he does this, he does that, he's getting help. Now, what she's failing to say is that the evidence will show that she's probably getting just as belligerently drunk as her man is. I guess maintain himself where I can do 50 things at once and still know the 50 things more previously prior that I need to get done. He can't process like that. He didn't process like that. So it, he would literally, not literally, but have smoke coming out of his ears. So the next thing you know, he doesn't want to deal with it. I'm going to go get something to drink. So the majority of the time, I would hang out outside or do something else because I don't want to drink. And every time, every time, his job broke his heart. And it made me sad because he had so much pride in his job. And the store that he took care of so much totally went downhill. Mm -hmm. And that broke his heart because he had put so much work and effort into fixing it up. And his manager was awful. Uh, again, notice the little comment there of the, I didn't want to drink. I didn't want to drink. 
evidence will show differently. Number two, again, how she goes into the whole thing about, oh, the, the fake crying, the, I got so sad, you know, and all that kind of stuff, like crying on cue, all that. Oh, you know, the story, oh, his manager was awful. She doesn't ever have, like, notice how she puts everyone down around her, and that's what these people do. They, that's just what they do. I mean, they buy these people. I'm literally just thinking of people like Amber Heard, Lori Daybell, Lori Daybell. These personality types, right? Um, so let's continue. Well, yesterday it made it sound like you guys were just drinking like a glass or two. Like, yeah, you obviously had the bottle, but you, I mean, you told me on the, yeah, but you told me on recording like that you were not drunk, he was not drunk, you guys were having I, a good time. I don't get, I can't get drunk. I, number one, I do not want to get drunk. I don't like being non complimentous having my wits about myself. I don't like feeling out of control. Mm -hmm. so. Now keep in mind, they're sitting here listening to her lie through her teeth. They already have all this evidence that it will become very clear she has no recollection of. Like she probably literally is sitting here saying all this, like look at, the, look at my phone and all this. No recollection that she's recorded the things that she's recorded on her phone, right? Where you're just like, are you kidding me? But also the denial that she's bringing into it. I think one thing that we oftentimes see with these kind of situations and substance abuse and things like that is this denial, especially in a situation like this. Of course, she's going to be downplaying it, right? Because she knows, like, I mean, this doesn't look good, right? And I'm sure somewhere in her mind, she is aware of what she did. She just doesn't know that she basically recorded herself doing the crime, right? And then basically told the cops to go look at it. Low key, you know what I'm saying? So let's let's just keep listening to what's coming out of her uh, her 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 you know, her mouth. So I'm just saying you're you're making it sound like like he's a raging alcoholic today and yesterday I was kind of asking you those questions and you're like a little defensive, like, no, we're not alcoholics. He I'm not we are not, you know. So, but you guys were both sober on Sunday, to your knowledge, because when I said you went and passed out, you were like, no, I didn't pass out, I just fell asleep. So now it's kind of like, what is it? Is it? Were you guys drinking and it got out of hand and no. it got physical? No. Or is it... Sunday was one of the better <coughs> days that we have had in quite some time. Okay, again, all the defensive... No! No! And then she's like, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, y'all, she's got, but it, listen to the cops though. Because again, during the opening, we saw during the little opening montage, whatever. I mean, when the cops are questioning them, she plays off, or questioning her, she plays it off like, oh, we had a glass of wine. You know, we were doing paint by numbers by the fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and then they just happen to think of playing hide and seek. The fact that you got the man into the suitcase, you zipped the damn thing up, and you left him there to die. Pretending he, he got out, right? Just that act alone. Who, it's like, listen to what you're trying to sell. Listen to the story you're trying to sell. It makes zero sense. No, I was not drunk. Right. I was not drunk. So, with him, I don't know. I, I know when it's like, oh, okay, man, where I have told him. Slow down. It's starting to catch up with you. Slow down. Slow down. And another thing, too, is I don't like listening to music with him because he gets too involved in the music, and the music that he listens to is a little rough around the edges, and, like, just, it makes me fractious listening to his music. So I kept asking him, let's not, just, let's, just you and me talk. You and me will just be the ones that are talking, which was fine because, I mean, he, we were playing with the dog, whatever, and then it's like, okay, now let's do the painting. We just did the puzzle, took a break, now let's do this. Sure enough, sat down, we're sitting in there talking, laughing, talking about new movies, we're watching movie trailers <coughs> while we're doing painting and all that other stuff. So it's still background noise to him because I think that's what he's used to is having background noise. Where me, I can sit in here all day with not a peep. But he always has to have some kind of background noise, which I didn't mind because the trailers were cool. And he was interested in showing them to me, getting excited about movies that were out or upcoming. Okay. So on your laptop you're talking about? Mm -hmm. like, okay. And I mean, and then it, we, it was... But you a, said it was a good day. Like, you guys didn't have any, have any uh, conversations about your relationship? 
relationship, you guys didn't go down, like, the rabbit hole, like, had too many to drink, and you guys start when getting... I, nope. When I tell you this, it made me so happy that he actually listened to what I, I had to say with just, we'll get through it. This will be fine. It's just, it's it's a small hurdle that you and I together will get through because... I'm talking about the money, jobs, stars. Yes. Now, again, it's, you would listen to what she's describing and you would think, you know, uh, somebody was babysitting. You know, we went and painted and we went and did this. I bet she drove him crazy around that damn house. I mean, my God, I can just see it now. You know, and then the whole thing about her, her the, well, the music he listens to is rough around the edges. I mean, she just doesn't have much good, with, with the things that she has to say, the things that good she does have to say about him are all designed to make her look like a saint, right? It's like she's not like going on about like the way you might expect someone to normally like talk about a partner or something like that. Now again, keep in mind the police already know all this evidence. So when she's like, so y'all didn't talk about your relationship or anything like that? No. No. And I'm just like, oh God, the cringe is like so painful. But it was, when I tell you, I was so happy. Like it was such a good day. I kid you not. The weather was beautiful outside. I'm the one that had him go inside. So we can do puzzles and painting and listen to music or whatever else he wants to do. So then he starts doing whatever it is we're doing mm -hmm. together in the living room. And then starts talking because I think he gets comfortable with, okay, you know what? We're here. It is a good day. Let me go ahead and explain myself. So I know. Nobody else knows, but I know. Nobody knew George better than I did. I say that I knew George better than himself. And I tried in every way, shape, and form. Ask everyone. I helped him. I took care of him. Oh, again, she is just 100% telling them, without saying it, the reasons why she took his life, right? Because she is so hung up on, I helped him, ask anyone. Now, they'll come up with this and it's like and she'll even admit later that his family is convinced that she was trying to kill him before her you know so I'm like clearly there's people out there that don't think this probably people that she has spun her story to or whatever but again that whole house of cards will fall apart very easily I miss him a lot and I didn't even sleep last night I miss him a lot I mean, is there any chance it got to be too much for you and you couldn't handle taking care of him? And I never stopped. Trying to I never help. stopped. That's what I'm here for. I never stopped. I'm here now because I'm still trying to help him. Yeah. We just don't. I mean, it's unexplainable how he got these injuries. and I have no idea. You were the only one with him. A hundred percent right hand to God. I have no idea how he got them. Nobody touched anybody. Nobody touched anybody. The desperation in her voice is like she's pleading. And again, I don't know, like at times, like well, this time specifically, I'm like, is she completely lying or does she have no recollection of them fighting and getting physical on that day, right? I would think not because she, as we'll see later, she completely tells on herself like this, uh, they, the cops already have, they're going to show it to her shortly, this evidence that they have, right? And I mean, notice how good the cops are where they're not, you know, they're, they're just being very, well, have, well, we have this and that. They're not buying into her little, she is trying to latch into them with all of her little emotional manipulative tactics that she does, right? And it's just not working with these two. I even went down and met his uh, probation officer, which I say, I, she, she's wonderful. That's one of my questions that I need to talk to you about. Hugged me and said how much she knows that I take care of him. She called me personally. One time, when George was at work, when he was working. 42-minute phone call. She and I just saying how grateful she is that George has me. And she knows how hard I'm working to help him, just as she is and just as the classes will. I would put money on it that she called the probation officer. I'm just like, I, I'm not, I, I'm not believing most of the story. I think that she lives in a delusional world, right? And we'll soon see that, right? 
I think she lives in a completely delusional world, and I think that uh, also a world of grandeur. And again, I just I reference back to people like Amber, uh, what's her name, Heard, where they live in this world that just only they can see, right? And this is so evident here. So let's continue. I started to feel that it was too much togetherness, and when you have too much togetherness, friction happens. So I'm gonna go ride my bike. I'm gonna go upstairs and read a book. But what he Every, what does he say, every waking moment he wants to be with me. So, and mind you, our townhome is either upstairs or downstairs. So it's like, if you would like to sit downstairs and watch a movie or play on the laptop, look up some jobs, you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to be upstairs maybe watching one of my shows or maybe reading a book. So, and then when that would happen, we really needed that. So what's for dinner? And then we would cook together and eat dinner, and then crawl in the bed and watch a movie. Are you talking about this is like recent? I don't you kind of like lost me. Like when, what are you it talking about? It was a while, like a little while ago. <clears throat> but I mean, now you're talking about, now you're talking about tension building up and that you need space. So have you been feeling that way lately or? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I love it where she, because I was thinking the same thing when I watched this, where she's like, okay, what are you talking about? Because you kind of lost me. And I've, I feel that that is a common theme with this interrogation. It's a tactic that Sarah uses to try and just throw a bunch of stuff out there. She essentially is groveling for this entire interrogation because she knows, right, she's, a part of her knows at least that she is fighting for her life per se, right? And so uh, this part here where she just goes off in this whole thing and just like the cop said, where she's like, now you're talking about tension building and needing your space and this and that. I mean, she just goes back and forth. I would almost argue that Sarah is drunk in this interview or has had at least a drink, okay? Maybe two. <laughs> okay, my thing is too, so you all know. Oh, I, I hate that you can't talk to her, but um, D, his ex-wife. When I say a monster, she's a monster. Like it does. She withholds her their children from speaking to him. So he gets upset about that, and then she like completely berates him about money, about the father that he is, what he did to her, all this other stuff. It doesn't matter. I mean, mind you, this has not, like, been recent, but, which is why he doesn't even bother calling anymore, because he knows that he's, she's going to answer, and he's going to have to talk to her, so therefore he can't talk to his daughter. The other time, he talked to her, made, made her talk to Cookie. That's on my cell phone, too, so you can see it. Okay. It doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter. What does she have to do, though, with anything about... What happened Sunday into Monday? I mean, aim damn in. Again, look at Sarah. She's sitting here gaslighting the hell out of this. Notice how, again, like I've said before, she has nothing good to say about anyway. She is literally going to everyone and talking about how horrible they are, but she is his savior. She is his savior. You would think he was the second damn coming of Christ and that she was here to save him and introduce him to the damn world or something. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, I mean, you know, honey, who do you think you are? I mean, she just goes on and on and on. And again, whether this is true about all these other people or not is irrelevant. Just like the cop said, what does this have to do with what happened Sunday? We're still talking about how did he get these injuries. Now, they're letting her go on and on, you know, because, I mean, this is just like what they do, right? If you watch as you know but she just goes farther and farther away she tries to get away so bad she's running as fast as she can away from how did the man get these injuries when it was only you around him just the other day like no i'm just saying like previously okay. why the incidents what happened is she plays a big part in it okay on top of job yeah. and money and mm -hmm. groceries and all that Okay. Sunday, I, <coughs> when I tell you this, I have no idea. I have no idea. Is there anybody else at the house? No, nope, it's just me and him. Now, she laughs at that in real damn quick. She's like, oh, well, yeah, has to do with the groceries and, you know, just overall stuff. But Sunday, ain't no idea. Is when you went to hide upstairs originally? No, that's when we were like painting. So then it's like, okay, well, I, we can't, I don't want to paint anymore. Let's just, ugh, come on. Okay, you want to play hide and seek? What he does is, okay, tag, you're it. So it's like, okay, we know. Okay, take off. Mm -hmm. 
That's what we did. And then you went upstairs, and then he didn't come up, and you came down. And the suitcase was there originally because you guys were planning to do donations, and so it was already suitcase. there. Um, have you guys ever played the, you said you played hide and seek like probably three times in your relationship. Mm -hmm. When you have played, have you ever zipped him up in a suitcase prior? No. Okay. I, I just, I'm speechless. I don't believe a word of it. It doesn't even sound logical. I mean, it doesn't even sound logical. You know, and again, if we're suspending ourselves right now and just viewing it like without any of the information that's come forth or any of that kind of stuff, where I'm just like, so you're painting or playing and then he says tag your Ed and that's like your signal to know that you're going to go run around the house and play hide and seek. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, if I was her... I would have come up with a, I would have spun a different story. I would have been like, look, okay, we had this, I, I'm embarrassed to say, but I'm going to be honest. We're keeping it like how she would do it. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be real truthful about it. It's this fetish thing we do, okay? It's hide and seek, but it's like adult hide and seek, okay? And things just kind of went wrong. No, we're just, I'm just asking out of the, in the past, like, have, have you ever zipped him up in anything, jokingly or not? But obviously, no. I understand, you know, you're claiming that Sunday it was a joking matter. You were laughing, yes. he was laughing. But what I'm just asking is in the past, like, is it something Absolutely that you guys not. normally do? Absolutely not. She's very serious about that. She's never done those other things. It was just this fluke little incident this last Sunday. Um, okay, so do you remember making any videos or maybe having any cover? Anything, any photos, videos that you remember doing on your phone on Sunday? No. <coughs> no. Uh, I think I took a picture of a dog. Oh, if only a picture of a dog was what they found on that camera. <laughs> Y'all, it's bad. And it's not funny. Okay, it is not funny. The funny part is the number and the audacity of it because she's like, no. I took a picture of a dog and I'm like, girl. Again, thank God these people do this, right? Because then they can catch them and bring them to justice. But I'm just sitting here and I'm like, yeah, this is getting ready to get really bad, Sarah. This isn't a cute look, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found. Um, and it was from your phone. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? You need to move it around, go ahead. Sarah. No, I don't remember that. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Your battery's about to die. Sure, I do. Oh. Okay, first of all, that 100% would be how my laptop would do, or my phone. That would be mine. Right, I mean, right at that moment, it died like, oh my God. You know Sarah had to change her damn panties right then and there. Because you that one line, they were like, do you see it? And she's like, okay, well, let me show you what we found. Here's this laptop. And I was like, oh, my God, this is about to get really good. And so then when they put that up there, and you just hear them, Sarah, and you can tell she's just drunk. She, I mean, she, this is for everything you've done. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I mean, it gets bad y'all this let's stop for a moment okay first of all if you're still watching drop hearts down in the comments for jorge because when i tell you that this man died a horrifying death that i wouldn't wish on anybody this woman is a monster okay let's put it this way I get out of breath reaching down to tie my damn shoes, okay? There's no way I could get into a suitcase, number one. Number two, if it happened, I'm like, I, I can't imagine. He had to have just suffocated in there for hours. I mean, it sounds absolutely horrible. And I'm just like, oh my God. So let's listen to how that played out, okay? While she watches this evidence that she has no recollection of taking. Oh, I was just simply asking because um, you had a, a look on your face when she asked you if you've ever done that before. You looked kind of shocked and... No. Okay, but why did you say it like that? Like... I don't think you all understand who I am, where... Okay. Well, tell me. 
I mean, I've always been a straight A student. I am an outstanding mother to my son. Okay. I excel at everything. I I would not do that. You wouldn't lock some, zip somebody in a suitcase? Well, I didn't like completely lock it. I mean, okay. I opened it with one finger. I left enough in there for him to get out. Okay. So I forgot that there's a couple of clips before they bring the laptop back. So first of all, again, I'm a straight A student. I excel at everything. And I'm just like, oh, sweetie, but not lying. Then, when she notice how they've walked her into now, well, I opened it with one finger. I left enough room for this. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. I thought we were playing hide and seek. Why would you put him in the suitcase and then go hide? You already know where he's at, right? This is why I'm like 100% convinced she's half crocked during this interview, right? Because her answers like literally made no sense. Is it long? Because I don't know how much I can take. Mm -mm. I don't know how much I can take. I don't know how to find her. Well, what I wanted to say is, well, how much could poor little Jorge take when you left him in the damn suitcase? I mean, this is the level of selfishness that I'm talking about. Now, she already knows her goose is cooked, right? I mean, she's just like... She knows that goose is fried. So that's why she's like, I can't take this. It's too emotional. And I'm like, but this what the, all these perpetrators like this always do. They turn around on themselves. Anyways, okay, let's get to it. Do I have to watch this? I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it, if that's okay. <clears throat> well, it's on your phone. And you can either explain it or we take it for what it is. Yeah. We're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. That's it. It's that long? Two minutes. No. For everything you've done to me. <coughs> For everything you've done to me. Oh. Fuck you. Oh. Fuck you. That's you, oh. your voice. I mean, my God, you can hear that evil. Like she's okay, so like she's one of those drinkers that when they start drinking, evil comes out, right? Probably has some evil seeping out before that, but it really comes out then. What do you say to that video? I would crawl under the interrogation table at that point. I would be like this. I'd be like, just put the cuffs on me. Just take me away. Give me a peanut butter sandwich when I get to the cell, but just take me away. Last, last time we talked to you, you had said that you put him in the suitcase, he had two fingers hanging out. And you I went flipped to him over. I flipped him over, and that's where it was. There's two different videos and a still picture where, yeah, it shows you flipping him in different positions and him saying that he can't breathe and you saying, fuck So you. this is upside down. So, in order for him to have gotten into it, it was flipped up. Right. It was flipped up normal. Yeah. Like, as if you're packing something. So, this is upside down. Guys, this is killing me right now. So, this image is upside down, and then this small video that occurred 11 minutes later, it's flipped over the other way, closer to your dining room table. Okay. Now, he's obviously still in there, so he didn't... How did that, how did it go from the back to the front? I flipped it. Okay. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. Well, that's what you did. Yeah. But not intentional of. No, you told me you went upstairs because what? you were Stop getting here. ready for bed. Stopped here. Okay, but here? show me where you can see any fingers coming out because there's the end. It's and his head's right here. Mm hmm So going like this, rather than going all the way up, it's like this. But why is he saying I can't breathe and why is he pushing on it as if he can't get out? 
And it doesn't show a hole. You, there's, there's no, no hole. Gap. There's no fingers. I don't see his fingers. There's no hole. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I don't know, like, what you want me to tell you. Wow. Okay, so when confronted with all of the glaring truth, she doesn't know what they want her to tell her, them, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this right here. Stop here. Stop here. I mean, she she was getting upset. One thing that I thought they did well is they kept playing it in the background while she was talking, and it agitates her. She can't take it, right? Because the truth is just staring her in the face. She has no idea how to talk her way out of this. And then she starts to, now, the, here we have it first. The first unintentional. She Notice how the story continually pivots. Once she's painted into like a, oh crap, I can't get out of this one, we flip it around a little bit. It's a tactic that these personality types use. They will lie and lie and lie until they can no longer lie. And most of them will keep lying. Cough, cough, Casey Anthony. But like her, she's going to then be like, I can't keep lying anymore. Let me switch it up a little bit. Let me do that. And that's what she does. But it's still, Sarah, it's, it's really bad, Sarah. I'm just showing you. I'm just telling you what we see and what we've heard from the other I understand. Video. I understand. He's begging to let for you to let him out. You sound, you're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end, it sounds kind of like a no. It's not malicious. Well, saying fuck you. It's not malicious. Then what is that? What does fuck you mean to you? Well, like if you were to, if I were to tell my oh, like he does. Like I get called <laughs> everything but a white woman. So okay, I. My intention was not to leave him in there. This is another reason why I think that she's totally crocked during this interview. And when I say totally crocked, like she could, she probably has to balance herself out every day with something. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm not shaming her for this, or whatever, but it's just, I'm, I'm adding into this because I think that her erratic behavior, there's a few reasons for it, but it's just very, it reminds me of, you know, situations that I've been in with people like this, right? And so. This erratic behavior that she's displaying of now she's getting angry. It's not malicious. You know, where I'm just like, girl, calm down. I mean, she's kind of scary, right? I mean, imagine this is her talking to the police. Imagine her being comfortable. Imagine her child getting in trouble over something, over being loud. I mean, come on, right? But this is where she gets, in. it's not malicious. It's not malicious. You know, and like just getting angrier and angrier and more agitated it's i think it's also pissing her off that they won't just buy in i think she's probably used to people just giving in to her and be like okay what it, it wasn't malicious sarah but this it's like not gonna go away right this is major 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 trouble right it's it's it was malicious sarah please understand that my intention was not to leave him in there but you went upstairs thinking that he could get himself yes. out, but the video shows That's at what no I point when I see his fingers. And He'll be up here any like, minute. And then 30 minutes later, he didn't show. And he's telling and me. And I he can't, can't wake up. Do you he's think he's joking? To you told me he was laughing, and I we were before. The video, there's, there's no we laughing. first got in there? Both of us were. So how long was he in there for? Like, this video is at 11.12 when it starts, so was he in there for like a long time prior to you no. recording this? No. Again, notice the little thing like, you told us he was laughing. We were before. I mean, she's quick on her damn toes. I'll give her that. A professional liar. But that's what these type personalities do. They just, they lie constantly. And so they're very good at it. I don't think she's good at it because she can't get the overall picture. And a lot of times they're not because they're very good at like lying and little details like this and throwing all this stuff out to try and pivot from point to point to point to point. But they never take a step back and look at the grand scheme of things where it's like, you're trying to convince people that he accidentally died in a suitcase while playing hide-and-seek with you. That's the story. That's the overall picture. It's not a cute picture. No. So it goes from funny to no longer funny, but I you're the only one laughing. But I didn't think that he... I love it. They'll keep saying that, but you're the only one laughing, Sarah. Was, like, panicky. Like, I didn't... I So pushing up on a suitcase saying, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah... I can't, I can't breathe. 
honestly, the deadpanness of these police officers is like almost comedic, right? Because like she'll say something like that, and again, she's not listening to it, and they're just being very matter of fact, you know. So him pushing up and saying, "I can't breathe, I can't breathe, let me out." That's not, you know, it's just like let's get on the same page here, Sarah. George has done that in the past before too, where it's just like he thinks that he's. Woe is me kind of thing, where it's like, I don't He's never been locked in a suitcase, but no. he couldn't get out, so... It's kind of... I thought it was and the you boy know the oxygen crawling wolf. Crying wolf. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter what she says this is what i'm talking about she's she's like good at pivoting each little detail to try and deflect and gaslight but she doesn't understand the entire picture she is trying to sell to these cops is that he is in the suitcase and having a good time at this while the poor thing's dying and they just are really reiterating that right now like but he's in the suitcase deprived of oxygen and did it i thought he was just crying wolf what like listen to yourself sarah sarah come on we need to sit you down we need to bring you over the sofa sarah okay we need to have a talk about this Sarah. it's it's just not good sarah kind of thing okay and again my plan but, that, but nowhere in there is he laughing is he joking mm -hmm. he is begging and you're the only one laughing okay and you're the only one saying derogatory comments like you're mad no please don't, I don't mean to sound negative, and I don't know if I can say this, but, <coughs> like, it's like you guys are kind of trying to, like, feed me. Like, no, I'm just trying to show you a video that you uh, no longer want to watch because you probably don't want to know the outcome of how and what you said. Well, I know what... You know, you know what's on that video now? No. You remember making that video? No. Oh. Why don't you remember making the video? Probably because we had been drinking. But you weren't drunk. No. And that right there shut Sarah down okay she the cop just laid it all out there and it's all true I mean it's just like okay but you don't want to you filmed the damn video I mean you she can't lie away on that now she's talking about I don't want to see the video well you filmed it you know and then the whole thing and this is where it goes into the whole dynamic of do you not remember filming it no why because we were drinking but you said you weren't drunk he's asking to come out he can't I didn't breathe. do it intentionally what do you think is going to happen if you leave somebody in a confined space like that? Well, I thought by not zipping it up all the way, it would be okay. My plan was not to leave him in the and suitcase. what was your plan? Waiting for him to come upstairs. And you then said, when he did it? I fell asleep. You said you were up there 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, somebody not coming up. I Knowing know. that you that the last time you saw him was in the suitcase, 30 minutes later, you're like, mm, maybe I should go check on him? Maybe I shouldn't? No. Well, See, you didn't, that didn't cross your mind because that's it like didn't an, That's like an assumption. Like, that's what you all are thinking. Just We're asking. It's the whole... You tell us. Oh, Sarah and those assumptions, she does not like those. This is probably the most that she has been pressed for the cold hard truth, and she doesn't know how to deal with it at all, and it is pissing her off, right? Because she just wants them to agree with her. And this is where you start seeing she's getting aggressive. It was unintentional. It was unintentional. Like, she's going to latch on on to that okay because she knows she's like oh my god i cannot handle it i have got to go and speaking of having to go y'all when i'm recording this right now it's showing that we're at the 28 minute mark on the second round of videotaping which means the video i depending on where it's going to come in it's I mean, I'm thinking around like 40 minutes to an hour already, and we're pretty much at the halfway point of the footage, almost exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause this for now. Just th let me know if you want to see more. I've got about 25 more minutes worth of footage. Um, I could do a secondary part to it and keep going. Uh, so let me know down in the comments. Uh, in the meantime, I'll put up another video up here on my little end screen if you want to click that and go watch another one of my little interrogation analysis or something like that. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to revisit Sarah. I'm going to go get ready for work in the morning and all that fun stuff. And I'll continue recording over the weekend. And hopefully you're watching this on like a Monday or something like that. It depends on whenever you watch it. And a couple of days later. And if you're watching this, you know, way down the road, then it's already here. And it's already connected. And you can watch part two. Anyways, thank you everybody for being here. I greatly appreciate it. 
Again, Silver Squad wouldn't be here without you. Roscoe wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. And I love you for it. Thank you for being a friend. Dun, 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 dun. All right, everybody. Until we meet back with this damn sofa and that damn computer, I'll see y'all soon.